Oh, hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Crafty Time Lady Hour. That's a terrible name. I'm not going to call it that. I'm still developing. I mean, it's a work in progress. I just couldn't wait to show you this project I developed. Because if you're anything like me, you're dressing for comfort rather than speed. And what's more comfortable than a pair of 100% cotton lady briefs, known in some circles as granny panties, or spinster knickers? <laughs> wow, that is a lot of cotton. That's not going to be riding up anywhere. But uh, it is a little plain. And even when you want to feel comfortable, you still want to feel like a lady. That's why I embellished my very own spinster knickers with homemade block stamps and fabric ink. Isn't that fun? I'm going to show you how I did it right this way. Now here's all the stuff you're going to have to buy for this project. Let's start with the carving linoleum. I don't know why it's called linoleum. We just have to accept it. You can get it in big blocks. Uh, I cut mine down to two inch by two inch squares because of these guys. Uh, it's double sided adhesive with a kind of a foam center, two inch by two inch square. And then there's the cubes. They're just wood cubed two inch by two inch by two inch. Uh, and then obviously you need a carver. I just have a basic beginner carver with some basic beginner blades. And because of blades, bam, band-aids. I try to be careful, but I don't always succeed. Also, I can't draw. If you can draw, you can draw your image right on your lino, but I can't. So I borrowed some silhouettes from the internet and I printed them out using a laser jet printer. Oh, let's not forget the panties, the whole reason behind all of this. 100% cotton and white because fabric stamping ink isn't super vibrant. So you'll want to have the white glorious panties. Um, and let's move on to the next step, which if you can draw, you won't need. But because I can't, I have to iron my image onto the lino. Um, like I said, I printed this using a laser jet printer. I've also had success with copies made on a regular copier. I did not have success with this step using inkjet printed images. You want to make sure you don't iron the actual lino block, just the image. And that's good enough for our purposes. Let's carve. So I'm just using um, the narrow but very deep V blade to carve around the outline first. And this works obviously whether you've drawn the image yourself or if you've done like I have here and you've used um, an image that was printed that you ironed on to the lino block. You do want to make sure you're carving away from yourself and you'll notice I don't do that right here because I live on the edge. I'm a rebel dotty. But like I said, I am carving around the outline of the silhouette first and then I'll go back and carve a little bit deeper to the side. And then I'll go back and carve out the bigger, thicker chunks. And there it is. That's my carved image. Now let's stick it. Take the lino, take the cube, take this amazing double-sided adhesive thingy. I bought it in bulk. There's like a bag of, I don't know, 50 of these square deals with adhesive on either side. Remove the paper to reveal the adhesive. Then you can just plop your lino on that or put it on the cube. It doesn't matter which goes first. I just felt like doing it this way this time. 
Then take off the paper on the other side. If you can find it. There we go. Good job. And now just line it up and stick it. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. There you go. That's a girl. Good job. How about that? Now clean up your workspace. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now we can test out our carving skills, which are pretty rudimentary, by putting the fabric ink on there. Even though I'm using paper to test, I can see by the way the ink lands on the stamp that I have some areas I'm going to have to probably clean up. Let's see. Let's test that theory. Yeah, look at that. Around the head, it's kind of messy. Need to clear off some of that lino. And I think the flippery things could use a little more definition as well. So let me get out my carver here. It sometimes takes a few tries, a few test tries to get it really clean. Um, and I'm just using paper here. Sometimes uh, you might want to use a pair of test panties or stunt panties. Um, because the stamp is going to look a little bit different on fabric than it does on paper. But here we go. I'm using a fabric stamping ink. It's Versa Craft. I don't get any kickbacks. It's just the one I found that will heat set uh, after stamping. Your paper crafting inks don't heat set the way you want them to. So... After 24 hours, you'll want to take your iron on your cotton setting, but no steam, and run it over for about 90 seconds to heat set that ink so it'll survive the washing machine. Nessie will have to wait 24 hours for that step. And there she is, old Nessie herself or the plesiosaurus, if you're a humorless buzzkill. I, I, um, I think it looks kind of zen just by herself, you know, just hanging out like some kind of dino brand. But uh, because the image is kind of dainty and petite, it can stand for repeats like I did with the uh, dragonflies. I just pulled these panties out of my pocket. That brings back some memories. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, the image is kind of small, so it's not going to work really well on, like, the center of an adult-sized t-shirt. Um, you could certainly use it for smaller projects like uh, card making or scrapbooking. You do want to use the appropriate archival ink for that. But let's not abandon the whole textile stamping notion so quickly. This is a great size for baby wear. I mean, come on. <laughs> I made that for my brother's new kid. And, um, you know, I, I suppose in some circles that might be a little, a little inappropriate, but, um, that's the fun for Auntie Jen. What's the point of being a crafty auntie if you can't make, uh, stuff that's slightly inappropriate that your nieces and nephews are obliged to wear? It's kind of all I'm living for these days. Anyway, we'll leave it on that note. <laughs> Until next time, stay crafty. What kind of noise does a plesiosaurus make? Asking for a friend. <coughs> That's what she said.